Hello, this is Summer Art Academy at the Knoxville Museum of Art. My name is Miss Hannah and I will be teaching Draw, Paint and Sculpt Part 3 for 3 and 4 year olds. Welcome back artists. Again, my name is Miss Hannah. Today we will be creating paintings using media like chalk and bubble wrap. We will mix our own paint using chalk and water, experiment with painting on different colors of paper, and explore color mixing using paint. Are you ready? Hi friends, we're gonna start off today by making our own paint using sidewalk chalk. What's really cool about using sidewalk chalk is that we can mix it into our paint, use it inside or outside on an adult approved surface. Um, I like to do it on the sidewalk leading up to my house or in my driveway. To make sidewalk chalk paint, you're going to need chalk, a grater or some rocks, and water. What we're going to do is hold your grater over an empty container and slide your chalk back and forth across the grater until the bottom is covered with pigment or little pieces of chalk. So I'm going to do a little bit more. The more pigment you have, the stronger your colors will be depending on how much water you use as well. So what I'm gonna to do to make sure I'm using just enough water is I'm putting this tool, it's called a pipette. I'm gonna set it inside my water, squeeze the top, let go of the top, pick it up, then squeeze again into my cup. And then I'm gonna use my pipette to mix. Get a little bit more out. and mix again. And once I don't see any more of the ground chalk, I know I have enough water and I've done enough mixing. So keep on mixing. I have some here that I made earlier and you can see if it sets for a while, the pigment actually goes down to the bottom of the water. And so anytime you leave your art and come back to it, just mix it again. And see how it's nice and liquidy and chalky. Here's some blue. And I'm going to go ahead and add some yellow. Now because I just used some blue and it's still in my pipette, I'm going to dip my pipette into my water, fill it with water, and then I have an empty cup and I'm just going to spit out that water to clean my pipette. Now I have a clean pipette that I can use to mix my yellow. If your pipette has a lot of the other color in it, what will happen is it can move colors from um, color to color. So you'll actually be mixing colors, which is never a bad thing, except when you've made orange and you really need some red. So, mixing that up. Now for painting. I have both black and white paper. So we can do lots of experimenting. And what I'm gonna do is just like I showed you with the water, take our pipette, squeeze the top of the dropper, let go, and you see how the red goes up into the pipette, and then I can squeeze it onto my paper. I can do small squeezes to make dots. I'm gonna rinse it, get some yellow. Or, I can even shoot it out and make lines. Rinse. Oops, got my water dirty. And again, anytime you see your water separating, just give it a little stir, fill up, and squirt. And there's that. Now, one really cool thing you can do is if you notice, I always use red, yellow, and blue. Those are our primary colors. And when the red and the yellow, or the blue and the yellow, or the red and the blue meet together on the paper, it starts making a color. It makes our secondary colors. So I like to use these three colors because I get accidental mixing on my paper. But you could also choose to use these colors to mix colors 
in an empty cup. As I said, I like to explore color mixing on the paper. So I love taking my yellow, putting it on the paper, then adding some blue and seeing how green accidentally forms. But there are other ways to explore color mixing. Most chalk sets will have some of your secondary colors, purple, green, and orange. And I'm showing you here, again, how we shave, grate the chalk into the container. Mix it with water. to form a green. I'm just gonna place some of that green on this paper. Oops, that was a big one. In this cup, I have blue chalk and yellow chalk. I'm gonna add some water, mix it together, and do you see how different that green is? A lot of times the pre-mixed colors are going to be a different shade than the colors you can mix on your own. So before you get out your secondary colors, experiment with your primary colors. Look at the difference there. For this project, we are going to be making bubble wrap prints. Now this project is going to be used again in part four. So if you make this and you're really attached to it, make another one that you're going to be willing to cut or tear in part four. What we're going to do is take a piece of bubble wrap with the bubbles pointing towards the ceiling, a paintbrush and some paint, and paint pretty quickly onto your bubble wrap covering the whole area. You can layer your paints so it mixes on your bubble wrap. So paint, 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 paint. And cover the whole space. You'll notice again that I'm using my primary colors because I love to see how those colors mix together to make other colors. You'll notice when red, yellow, and blue become super combined, they make a kind of brown. Once you have your bubble wrap covered, you're going to lay it down on your paper, press, lift it up, and you'll have a print. A lot of times you can pull a second print. So place it down again, press, and see what happens. We're going to want to keep going until your whole paper is covered. If you want, you can continue layering on the same piece or after you've pulled a couple of prints, you can switch to a new piece. And here's my final product. Notice how I covered as much as the paper, of the paper as I could. And I was having so much fun, I kept making prints and made some smaller ones as well. Thank you for joining me for part three of Draw, Paint, and Sculpt. Today, we experimented with new painting techniques and even got to make our own paint. Next time, we will be creating our own stencils and exploring collage. Hold on to those bubble wrap prints because we will be using them for a special project in part four.